I woke up this morning and decided to read Atomic Habits. I've had the book for some time now, but I'm very careful not to read books like this until I'm prepared to implement whatever I learn from them. I buy certain books because I want to improve myself, and I don't read them until I'm prepared to make the specific changes that I bought the book to help me make. I'm a huge fan of the science of habits. I've been studying and incorporating the power of habits into my life for several years now. I finally felt like it was time to add an additional book to my body of knowledge on habits, so I started reading Atomic Habits. I ended up starting with the back of the book. I looked at the table of contents, and the last chapter, chapter 20, jumped out at me and grabbed my attention. It's called The Downside of Creating Good Habits. I've already committed myself to this whole habit thing, so I wanted to see what I've gotten myself into. Man, am I glad I started with that last chapter because it gave me exactly what I needed right now at the start of the year to do the kind of critical analysis in December necessary for me to improve myself next year based on the results that I created for myself and for others this year. In that last chapter, I learned about using a decision journal to track my major decisions, why I made them, and my expected outcomes. I wrote down a number of major decisions I've already made for the year, including the decisions that I've made for clients with the coaching advice that I give them. After doing that, I decided I needed a simple end of year survey for my clients to complete. Here are the questions. If you continue following the program I've created for you, do you envision it being a significant factor in you achieving your five-year goals? Question number two. How do you rate the effectiveness of the program I prescribed for you this year at helping you achieve your goals for this year? Choose one option, and the options are total failure or near failure, less effective than you hoped, more effective than you expected, complete or near complete success. So the four options again, total failure or near failure, less effective than you hoped, more effective than you expected, complete or near complete success. You'll notice that there's no middle option. I don't have an on the fence option. Either I'm more effective than you, you were expecting or less effective than you'd hoped, but there's no middle option because middle option is a cop out. There's no opportunity for improvement there. Oh, and the third question is keeping in mind that your full cooperation is required. What can I do to help you be more successful? So those are the three questions that I'm going to present to my clients at the end of the year to give them an opportunity to give me critique about how, I, how effective I've been at helping them so that I can be better next year at helping others and as well as uh, achieving my goal, which is, which is to help as many people as possible and be as effective as possible in doing it, um, helping others achieve their goals. So this is going to be one of the benchmarks that I use for measuring my progress. Now I'm going to start with chapter one of Atomic Habits. I'm really excited for what this book holds for me because it's already given me so much and it's not even 5 a.m. yet at the time I wrote down these thoughts. Yeah, I get up early and without the alarm clock because I go to bed early. It's a huge part of why I'm able to be so productive during the day. I just get to jump on everybody else. Another important habit of mine is I do not start my day with the internet. If I'm going to consume anything, it's going to be from a book. Otherwise, I wake up and put myself into creation mode because creators create the lives that they want for themselves and consumers just watch. This morning, I got the best of both worlds. I read a chapter in a book and learned something useful that inspired this video. I'll see you in the next one.